Hello, hello. Uh, today we will do some coding. We will do a code editor in Zeek. Zeek is a wonderful language, a better C, uh, and I think it's a perfect choice for a code editor. So let's begin. We will call our editor Kisa. I have made it up just before the recording, so let's start with creating a directory and uh, zik. What do I do? Zik init exc because it will be an executable. All right, we will have everything. So let's try to run, let's try to run it. Okay, it takes a while for the first time. All your code base I belong to us. Well, seems uh, like it's working. Okay. So let's uh, also init the Git repository. And what do we have here? Zcash out. We probably don't want uh, these uh, cache and out directories. Let's create a git ignore. Zcash and zig out. Uh, yeah, that seems right. Okay. Let's create our first commit. Beautiful. So we will do a terminal one. And uh, I have recently ported uh, the new courses library to Zeek. Not all of it, but uh, enough to get started. So let's uh, Add it as a sub module. I know in Zig there are uh, some uh, package module systems, uh, two kind of uh, popular, but still there is no official because uh, it is not the priority, but it will be soon. The language is uh, pre uh, 1.0 version. So let's just import it as a sub module for now, okay? So yeah, I checked whether this uh, this name was uh, already taken by someone and seems like a career and some kind of polit political stuff, nothing in the technology land. Okay, so it should be somewhere here. Let me repositories. No, yeah, this one. So we have a code, and uh, I also opened uh, submodules because I don't really remember how to do that every time. Git submodule add. Git submodule add. So this should add everything if I'm right. Uh, if blah blah blah. And then, yeah, we just, yeah, okay, yeah, we should be good. We clone in the library and it's done. Let's see what we have. Yeah, seems okay. Let's commit at Zig new courses. Now uh, let's start with something simple. Uh, as a code editor, we will need to read a file and uh, display it on the terminal. We will not use uh, GUI like GTK or something native like Cocoa or Mac OS. Let's just use terminal uh, because I like terminals and uh, I think that the best way to do good uh, stuff is to do it for yourself. So uh, let's begin with, uh, yeah, let's read the file. In Zeek, uh, reading files uh, is a bit harder than your average program. So I will refer to my previous work. I did uh, Rosetta challenges for a compiler. And there are a lot of examples uh, how to read the code, or oh, the code, uh, read the file uh, from as the in and uh, as a parameter, as a first argument. Uh, yeah, somewhere here. Yeah, I think this should do it. Oh, 
Okay. And uh, let's uh, let's get uh, through the call. First, we initialize allocator, then we defer to the init it. This is arena allocator uh, in Zeek memory management is rather explicit. And arena allocator is just something that you initialize once and you de-initialize it at the very end of the program. So it should be good for now. I don't know which memory management we should use here. Maybe we should go with a general purpose allocator like malloc or something like that. But uh, let's do this uh, for now. So I also uh, saw that Ali is a better name for allocator because allocator is very long to write. Let's use Ali. So we here get our arguments. This is we get an iterator, iterate it once, and get a program name, and it shouldn't really fail, or rather return nil. So we use or else. Then we get the file name, and we see that uh, if, uh, yeah, if we have a file name, meaning that we have uh, the, the very first parameter we get uh, the string of it and and if don't we are waiting for standard input right yeah this seems all right and so we also close it at the very end now we try to allocate all the memory read to and alloc do we have something like uh, read all without, without this thing? Here we specify the length we want to read. And, uh, now we want to read just all the file. Let's go to the, uh, the zik uh, code itself. It's uh, very easy to browse uh, zik code. It's very uh, understandable, at least for me. But I think for everyone it should be kind of... Uh, Bearable, I think bearable. So let's uh, use this file handle. It is, what do we need to do? Okay, it's open file CVD FS. Let's go to FS of file. We have a file, I think. Can we read it? Okay, read file seek by seek to maybe we should also read to end alloc. Yeah, this is what I'm using. Read to end alloc options. Okay, what else? Read to the buffer, read all, but also a buffer. We don't have a buffer, right? We want to read everything at once. P read all. What is P read? Um, so it is when with an offset. With an offset. Read V. Um, it's from IO VEC, whatever it is. And yeah. I think we chose the best option here. So let's call it um, input content, maybe just content, right? And let's uh, make sure that everything works by printing it out. Content. So now we will need uh, some file. Well, we can as well use uh, this file, the same file, zik build run dot zik. Um, zik build run. Cannot run step. I oh, it wants a step. We need to give it as an argument to the function. Okay, we changed it to alley. Let's change it here too. Okay, here too. Let's go. 
and Britain. Yeah, I need to learn how to write. All right, we have it. We have successfully read a file. Yeah, we can give us ourselves a bit of clapping. Let's commit. Read and output a file. And uh, we also can do it via standard uh, standard input. Uh, I think it is done like this, right? main.zik. Yeah, or with uh, utility with a Unix pipe. Let's try that. main.zik zik build run. Yep, works. And if we run just zik build run, it will wait for a standard input. We can write something, write something, and then press Control D for the end of input, and it will print same scene, right? Here, here, yeah. Okay, so now we have a file. So let's uh, let's display it uh, in the new courses context, right? We want to do some new courses processing. So let's first display it not on this uh, terminal, like uh, I use Kitty as a terminal. And so what we do here is we display it inside Kitty. What I want to do is to initialize new courses and display it uh, in the overlay over Kitty. Uh, so let's first add our library. We have here, um, where do we have it? Ah, Zik and courses, it's <laughs> with Zik cache and Zik out uh, invis invisible. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to go to build.zik. Um, yeah, our build.zik. Build let's remove, remove these comments. Um, let's add our library. So let's uh, search for an example. I should have several examples of. Yep. So X uh, EXC. Yep. Let's use that. Add package path. Um do we maybe here add executable after add executable. Yeah, we can do it here. So we will add new courses and it will be uh, at the root zik new courses slash lib.zik. Okay, so it should add it with an alias new courses. And uh, let's get back to main and try to use it. We'll use uh, using namespace, so all the symbols are readily accessible without the need to fully qualify them with the namespace. Import new courses, and let's uh, let's get uh, new courses hello world program in the examples. Is it here? Yeah. So we, after we have read the file, um, we should also, I think, start uh, doing it in functions. Yeah, I think we should do it uh, in functions so that we can structure it uh, a bit better later on. So let's put file. Uh, reading in, in a, to a function and we'll call it read input mm, sounds right read input it will take an alley which is allocator a pointer to allocator and and that's all it will return um what is it going to return uh, yeah, it will just return a slice. 
Okay, and I think we can do it like this. Yep. Here we will need content. Const content equals try read input. We use try because uh, this this can fail. Every time we use try means we can fail and so we put uh, an exclamation mark to signify that this function can possibly fail. Um, okay, here we will just return. Oops. So this should return a slice, as I understand. Read to end a lock. Let's find it one more time. Yeah, it returns a slice. Is there some implications like return to own slice or something like that? Uh, probably not. It just allocates some memory and we should be fine. Yeah, we should be fine. So we will get uh, a slice, uh, basically a string, and we will be responsible for freeing its memory. Let's just supply an allocator. All right. So is it going to work? Okay. Okay, good, good. It also took some a while because we uh, included new courses, which also includes uh, a C library and translation of new courses header, which I have on my system, right? I have this uh, new courses installed and the header file too. Uh, previously, I spent some time maybe translating the half of it. Uh, maybe a third of it, but a lot, uh, all the essential stuff is there. So let's commit, uh, put input reading into a separate function. Seems okay. Now we should uh, initialize our new courses context. Okay, so we've got our content and now instead of using SD debug print, we will do it with new courses. Initialize screen. We de initialize it at the very at the very end. And then we try to print something. So we do try print w zik. This will print to the screen uh, where the, our cursor at is at and it will be the very first position, the upper left corner if I'm right. So we'll need to print a string and let's pass it as an argument. Now, this actually prints to a virtual screen and we will need to uh, move it to the real screen so we see it and we do it with a refresh command. Yeah, and uh, this is uh, how we stall the screen. We uh, ask to read one character. So uh, we ask to read one character and uh, if everything goes, uh, if when I press it, only then the program exits. We don't want it to exit prematurely. Okay, let's try it. Okay, use of undeclared, undeclared identifier. Okay, so this means that we probably as a mistyped, let's try to copy it here. Yeah, nothing changed. It means that uh, we don't import the correct stuff. This is lib.zik. Oh, right, we still have a separate uh, namespaces for C 
and new courses. So we need to write here new courses. Like so. All right, these are different errors, which is great. C import failed. Libc header not available. Okay, so I suppose it means that we need to link against libc. Hmm. It's a bit strange because uh, in the library we already do that. So do we need to re, re import the C stuff? Hmm. Okay, let's try just uh, linking with the C library. So we also have it in Zig. Uh, I mean, new courses. So we have link system library, link libc. So yeah, maybe we need this because we don't really link anything, right? Let's do that. And not examples, but exe. Okay. Okay, how about now? The moment of truth. Okay. It says resize fn and uh, as I understand, uh, we use this uh, uh, main. We use arena allocator, and if I remember correctly, resize fn does not implement. Well, uh, arena allocator does not implement resize fn. So uh, maybe we can check it. Arena. And what about resize fn? resize well we have resize so maybe it's not the problem okay let, let's try again let's try Alexis Alexis or okay so maybe the problem is that we didn't close standard input because this one works, but it doesn't work with standard input. Hmm. Okay, so I don't know what's uh, the reason exactly. I will just add a to do here or as a fix me, fix me. Set so in blocks in courses. Yeah, something like that. But now, see, we have. Yeah. And uh, how fast is it? Out. Kisa. Ah, it, it expects uh, <laughs> file name. Yeah. Pretty good. Zigbill run. I always forget. Is this fast? Oops. Yeah, pretty fast. Five milliseconds to read the file. Okay, so let's not uh, get to. Uh, Let's not try to prematurely optimize anything. So now we have something working. Let's commit what we have. Display the file content in 
your curses, context. So, okay, we have uh, our file displayed. Mm. Now, what do we want to add? Mm. Maybe we want uh, some uh, abstraction to display the line count. So at the very top, we want to have one, two, three, four, five, and uh, to the bottom. Yeah, let's try doing that. I think the correct way uh, would be to have uh, an abstraction around the content, and we will have a line into iterator that will give us a line. So we will uh, put a number and then print the line. Okay, let's do that. So we will create a, a struct. Yeah. Uh, and let's do it pub. Let's do everything pub because. Uh, okay, let's not uh, let's not run ahead of ourselves. We'll have a buffer. We'll have a buffer for each file, and uh, we should also have a virtual buffer for n not yet saved uh, for uh, screen for like uh, windows uh, or views to the text which are not mapped to the files on the file system. Now we can call it a buffer, I think. Well, let's do that. It will be a struct. It will have an allocator. And uh, it will have, uh, I guess, uh, content. Uh, how do we call it exactly? Yeah, let's just content will be U8. We don't want to make it constant because uh, we will likely modify it in the future. So let's just sketch a general interface for that. Public function. Okay, okay. Public buffer. And we will uh, uh, do a next line. It will return a line. Um, <laughs> do we also want to keep the line numberings inside the buffer, or do we want to have uh, a separate struct that will manage this abstraction? So here we will return constant u8 string and so uh, we also have the split iterator in the standard library already which uh, does exactly that split iterator it splits the line and uh, it has a next function which uh, outputs uh, something yep exactly that so we have a pretty good uh, library for that. Let's use that. Uh, we'll have this line it. It will be a line iterator, split iterator. So we use a lot of std mem. Maybe we should write it here. Or maybe not. Okay, we need to initialize buffer at first. We need we will give it content, which is um, U8. So we would like to copy it to take ownership ownership of it, as I understand. Uh, okay, 
we will get a buffer. Yep, a buffer. Now we will return buffer. Oops. Alley is uh, allocator that we will receive. Ah, uh, yeah, here we need to write equals. Content is uh, content and line iterator is our std mem split. Okay. std mem split content and we need a delimiter which is a string. Okay, so a new line will use the Unix one for now. Maybe we will add uh, this uh, slash r slash n window stuff, does, but uh, I also read that it is somewhat complicated, so let's not do that now. Okay, so we are generally fine. But this line, yeah, we want to actually duplicate it because we want to take ownership. Uh, there should be a dupe function, something like that. Maybe an allocator, dupe. Yep. Caller owns the memory. Okay. Looks right. So let's use it. We should do this self allocator. Yep. So let's do it. Let's do alley dot tip. And we duplicate. We should put a type. And we put a same constant type. So this should work. Now we, ah, yeah, try. Should use try here. And if we are at that, let's also create uh, an error union. In Zeek, we use error unions to indicate which errors uh, are. Uh, available or as a allowed uh, which errors um, functions are allowed to emit for better error control and I know that uh, this allocator stuff uh, usually produces out of memory error is this right error yep out of memory a single one so far, this is a, sing a single error that can be produced. Buffer error and next line. Yeah, I think we should be safe here without any errors. And it should be just the uh, same interface as our split iterator, like so. Okay, so let's try get our content, right? Then we initialize our buffer. Try because it can return an error. Buffer dot init alley content, and that's all. Now we want. Uh, to print some stuff. Okay, so we want to iterate uh, through buffer while it has s at least some lines in it. We will do it with for loop. In Zeek, uh, it is very convenient to use this for loop 
like so and if it returns none null we get our line if it returns null it just ends like so now we will need to print a line also add a new line because it is eaten by the split iterator and we want to print a line number right so let's also add an index here it will start with zero and this means we should uh, just add one to it let's print yeah let's use same uh, function for printing i think it should be all right idx okay so how we are we doing expected zero found one before okay so oh i see i see uh when we put uh, functions inside the buffer we should also uh, put the self or some kind of the first uh, argument the buffer itself and pass it as a pointer because we want to mutate its state currently this line uh, iterator is mutated and uh, this also let us let's us call it uh, in this uh, method call style yeah? object dot method but it's not really a method if we are talking in zig terms just a function inside the struct and uh, use of undeclared identifier yeah sure we should uh, reference it to itself okay expect type buffer found const buffer yeah we shouldn't declare it as a const we will mutate it and now expected type const u8 found okay so i guess we should uh, put u8 here this is what the error says yeah yeah let's try that does not support field access 34 i do not understand this error completely maybe we can try it without index let's try to erase the index for now okay it's not the problem with the index so what's uh, does not support field access do we do a field access anywhere with the line dot something not really so maybe four is not the right stuff for it okay maybe we can go to our split iterator and uh, see any examples of the for loop uh -huh. let's go to zeek documentation for loop what can we do with for loop over slices and arrays we don't need that we need to determine whether it is a null value or an actual value of a portion of a slice rates slice by reference 
follows as expressions for items value if value does not equal to null um okay so apparently we can do that can we do it with while while with optionals mm, yeah i think while is what we should use here so we will have a while okay so print w zik out of memory index try write blah 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 so here we do some interfacing with c this is why this error is unreadable but uh, we will have to read it no other way okay so let's uh, start with something simple let's try to put a number here okay we can do that maybe we can um maybe it is uh, too uh, far uh, of the screen maybe it's mm, the number of lines are very uh, low and uh, it uh, cannot print them so zero we can't print zero one time maybe we print a uh, line too many times so it goes beyond the bottom border of the screen so if we let's try to i equals one we also have uh, this is going to be uh, our line count right we have this construct that we can uh, do some stuff when iterating line count we will do here line count and we will break if line count plus five break must be const or comp time okay maybe we should give it a type yeah like that one two three four okay let's try with uh, 10 maybe it's 60 lines yeah and uh, we can see that uh, 54 is the maximum so let's try 54 lines okay let's try 55 lines okay 56 yeah yeah it's uh too too much to the bottom <laughs> let's say it like this so let's uh, just uh, print 30 lines so it is conveniently we can uh, maybe 24 so it's half the screen okay so on resize we still get an error because it cannot resize okay so 24 is all right let's uh, do it like this line count all right so we want 
to have a space at least one right so we should be like here and we also want to uh, we also want to have the required space uh, so for example we want uh, this one to be uh, two character wide like 10 so it is aligned that we want to have this one to the left uh, yeah, like uh, on this real editor uh, we, these lines are aligned uh, to the right side right we want a similar effect uh, for that we will need to count the largest number we will probably need to do it uh, for the screen but now we can do it uh, for the whole file first yeah, so it will no longer be a single pass we won't be able to next line because uh, first time we will need to do a pass of analyzing to get the maximum number okay so how do we want to do it we probably need a better abstraction as well for this let's um let me think we probably want uh, to get a number of lines like uh, we want to get all the lines then we want we want basically not to get uh, an iterator style line by line but we want to get all the lines we're going to show on the screen here we will have a hard-coded 24 let's uh, also make it a constant like uh, max height 24 and we want to if we are going to have 24 then yeah we still need to do that because i thought that we have 24 then two digits max but we still can have only sin single digits and we shouldn't uh, sw uh, switch any alignment uh, with single digits okay so uh, let's uh, let's count we will do this counting right and then we will do printing after that so let's try it the dumbest way possible so here we want to count lines yeah here we do same stuff line count equals one line count equals one and we want uh, to count the lines so here our line count is actually going to be uh, the desired uh, amount of the lines we want uh, to count so basically this is it so now we should uh, count how many characters uh, in the number yeah we should probably do it with a modular operation is this right yeah probably right const uh, max line count width yeah and we do line count modulo is this how we do modular in zig uh, module Odd. Um, where is my cursor? I don't really see it. It's so hard to see. Yeah, here. Odd. Yep, here. 
modular, remainder, whatever. Yeah, I don't see it. Modulus division. Maybe we should use a, it is built-in functions. Maybe we should use that because it doesn't apparently have a percent operator. Remainder division. Well, it has. Okay. Oh, all right. I think we can do that. Let's use a normal modulo. Modulo 10, and if we have one, we're going to have like one, two. We'll have one, two. If we have 10, yeah, we'll need, we'll need to do it in a loop, I think. Okay, let's do that. So initial size is zero. Now we will need to uh, divide it. Line count. Yep. While line count is not equal to zero, and we will uh, divide it by ten every iteration. Max line count. Plus one. Okay, we should get the max line count, and this is the number of uh, digits that we want uh, to. We want. This is a number of characters that we. Uh, the space that we want to have uh, for the line count. But here is another problem that this should be compile time stream. This is how it is implemented in Zig. So what we need to do, I think, is uh, yeah, we we should have something like this. We should have nothing aligned to the right. And here is our width. Maybe we can still. Is this going to compile? Forty-two. Let's also use U thirty-two. FMT three to four. Writer from here okay if we do it like this yeah if we do it like this it is cool but <laughs> it's to do it in a bit different way mm. int to string can we use int to string it's not going to be comp time yeah, we'll have to emit some spaces, I believe, depending on the current width. Yeah, it doesn't seem very optimal. But uh, maybe for 100 lines it should be okay, I guess. So let's put uh, this stuff into a separate function. We'll call it um, number width. Yeah, and we get uh, a number. Let's use U32. What is U32? So it's something like 2 to the 32. Yeah, this number looks pretty big we should probably be safe that we're not going to have a file that has more lines than this number 
okay how big uh, is this uh, file gonna be going to be one character and uh, that's the for e in sec this and we do echo i to many lines dot txt and something like that right let's also time it okay and while we are waiting let's uh, finish our function okay we have var and we say it is n we have line count which we don't want here exactly year 32 this is what you want to return from the function number width line count fish to match data emitted by command substitution oh i see i see it uh, it tries to make uh, this into a list so it's all in the shell we probably shouldn't do that let's uh, okay let's write a quick script so we will need this number and we will do just need to do it that many times let's uh, lines that name for i in zero this number of times we will write to a file so how do we write to a file um, write file uh, something like that name length documentation searchable index standard library yeah right f file i o just right how do i open a file read bias right right file i think should be yeah this right file and we want to append actually right so if we want to append to the file so let's read and then append append let's open it in uh, file mode fm append and then read open okay so we have open 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 yeah this one it returns a file handle uh, let's uh, var f equals this is io io functions should be imported open lines many lines many lines that txt yeah and so uh, we should fm append and now we do f right and we also append this new line so something is not right probably because we don't need a dot here and let's see what name is going to tell us. Type mismatch got string one of file of size fm read. Yeah, we don't need a set here. Yep. Uh, I use name because uh, it's just very fast to write in this language and it is a fast language 
I know Ruby, but I think in Ruby this many lines is going to take a while. Even Nim doesn't do it as quickly as maybe we should just. Yeah, let's check. Uh, do we have something in? Yeah, we already have a lot of stuff. Let's uh, just compile it in release mode. It will do it uh, much faster. So let's uh, get back uh, to the NIM program. Meanwhile, result is n. Result here. Result is zero. And uh, we also want to uh, to shadow this n. Let's use a full uh, version of the name and now use a short name. Okay, this sounds right. And we want to return a result while n does not equal to zero. We will reduce it by one uh, base, uh, one, one base, or so like one radix base, right? Dividing it by ten. We will have uh, for one. We will have one. For zero, we will have zero. Minus one is not allowed because we have an unsigned type with this u prefix. Okay, so this should work. So we have max line count with now. We should uh, emit uh, some number of characters, right? We should make a difference between uh, our current line count and the max line count. And we should emit exactly that many. Okay, so let's do that. Max line count. That's, that's yeah, you said it, we have it. Okay, minus line count. Hopefully it will iterate exactly that many times. I'm not sure actually. Let me check. We uh, already didn't uh, use the four properly. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's going to do that. Okay, okay. So when we want to do something exactly n times, we can always use a while loop. While uh, we will need to have uh, some temporary variable, right? Let's uh, do it in separate scope as well. R i equals zero, yeah. or we want to have it uh, like uh, line count. Okay. I while this is not zero. Oh, wait, wait. We want to do it this many times. So max width minus um, number width line count. So we want to do uh, to insert that many uh, spaces. Okay, so this should be simpler now. <laughs> okay, while i does not equal to zero, we will increase i by one and we will insert one space. Try print or add ch, yes, this. Okay, so. I think this is uh, how it's going to be. We have a um, maximum, then we count uh, how what's the width of this number, and we do it exactly this time. Minus. Okay, so our NIM program takes a while. I guess uh, 
the maximum number uh, of uh, U32 it takes a while to print. Let's span a new terminal while go to Kisa and let's do that. So to it does not look correct. So it uh, doesn't add anything here, which is right, but it adds two spaces here and we want it to add just a single space. So what uh, could be the reason? So what is the I in this example? And by the way, I I don't really know how to properly do debugging when developing new courses because this is actually capturing uh, our whole terminal and if we do some debug print uh, or if we try to enter debugger like LLDB or GDB it will interfere with the new courses window and uh, I'm not yet sure how to properly address that and use it successfully. Okay, so here one, two, three, four, five. Here's five spaces as well. So yeah, so something is not right here. I think we have this hard coded and this is the reason. Let's try one time. Oh yeah, that looks fine. But uh, we also have an empty line. Why do we have this? Uh, why, why do we not start from the very beginning? This is our SRC main file, right? And we start from the line. 25. Ah, I see, I see. Uh, I guess uh, here we already mutated the state of the iterator on this line. We want to reset it. Pump fn line reset self buffer what's uh, reset function probably reset next no but uh, we should still be able to do something i guess if we put index to zero it is going to work okay self dot line it dot index equals to zero void okay so we did some counting now we do cleanup and reset okay so yeah we got our numbers here so some progress let's commit that numbers are printed all right so our we also have uh, yeah new files many lines let's count many lines how many lines do we have here oh this is going to take a while too i guess yeah I didn't expect it to be such a big number and uh, we use this uh, cocoon editor let's see how it's going to act with this file oh it just errors out it cannot open it file is too big how big is it oh my 46 gigabytes 
Okay, okay. I, I think uh, U32 is an enough big uh, number to um, represent the line count. Because if uh, we are going to make it U64, which is the next logical number to do, it's going to be like uh, U32 times U32. Right, it means that we will have 36 gigabytes uh, times 2 to the power of 32, which is <laughs> I'm not sure how. Uh, okay, let, let's do that. Let's let's use Ruby. Let's use Ruby for that. Uh, we have 46 gigs. Now we will 2 to the 32. Okay, so now let's try to um, get uh, how much, how big it is going to be. So this uh, this is the number of gigs, right? So this is gigabytes, right? So then we can put like 0.5, and next one is terabytes. Right, then we can do do it like this. This is going to be petabytes, right? There are um, well, let's get uh, some help with this uh, metric stuff. Terabyte wiki. Maybe wiki is going to have metric of all the simple English. Byte wiki, multiple byte, yeah, here, petabyte, all right, then one, this is, this was terabytes, mm, okay, gigabytes, terabytes, now petabytes, now exabytes, how do you exabytes? Yeah, EB. EB exabytes. So, 197 exabytes. If we use uh, U64 for line numbering. Okay, I think we should be okay we should be okay yeah let me try with a couple of other editors we have amp well cocoon just uh, says that uh, file is too big debug in debug uh, let's try amp is it going is it going to crash place your bets i think it's going to crash Oh my! Let's look. Um, let's look at this memory. Okay. Oh my God! <laughs> it's going to end my stream. Uh, uh, my recording. Uh, it's trying to open it. Read it all to the memory. Oh yeah. Okay. Is Oom going to kill everything I have? And my recording going to break? I'm getting scared. I, I, I'm pressing Control C. Please. Yeah, okay, I want to kill this. Please. Yes. Okay. Polite quit request. Okay. I respect AMP for politely quitting. Okay, AMP uh, didn't crash, but it uh, tried to crash my system. So we have Vim and Vim. Yeah, let's install it. Mm, okay, yep. Uh, we will also need, yeah, by the way, let me add these libraries. Do I have a list of all the libraries? Uh, here I have uh, some 
yeah i have them already I have some overview some ideas about what editor i'm going to do so we have so state of the art uh terminal editor neovim how is it going to open it okay watching watching at the memory here at the, at the top all right it's growing okay it's growing rather slowly 11 gigabytes 12 14 yay a bit afraid it's going to uh, i'm i have never experienced oom out of memory killer but please system is still responsive i guess it's just because not all cpus are busy but memory is quite high we probably don't want that okay tries to read it all to okay can we kill it with control c okay so it's interesting right because um, we tried to kill it with control c and uh, it opened file in read only mode with uh, as many characters as it could let's switch to the very end yeah so this is like a fourth right a one quarter of the lines which is uh, somewhat uh, like uh, it consumed uh, about 10 gigs of memory which is logical because 46 gigabytes is the file size okay i think this is smart right all right we have um yeah, it tries to deallocate memory, which is not very nice. Let's kill it. We're trying to be polite. Okay, let's be harsh. Yeah, forced quit, not polite. We're not going to be polite if the program misbehaves. Okay, so I have this. No, I don't have this. Let's try this. Yes, we should. Yeah, this terminal is kind of unresponsive now. Let's go ISA. This editor. Oh, two words. Let's. Yep, this one. I installed them, but I deleted because I thought oh, I wouldn't need them. Mm, many lines. What? 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 It, it opened. Oh. Okay. Okay. Not bad. My idea is that uh, it uh, we can do that stuff too. You know, we can uh, read the file, not read it it entirely, just read it to display for the screen size. Yeah, we need to display just twenty five lines here, just twenty five, mm, and uh, we can just read it sequentially. Right, I think if we try to go to the very end, it's going to hand forever. I think uh, Shift G does it. Oh, so it also it has also read at the end. Wow, that is very smart. Now this uh, this editor of these uh, is like this. 
like very cool i uh, i've read uh, on the wiki uh, on github and it has some very nice uh, thoughts about it really liked it so we have our first winner for now uh, let's also try we have amp with micro let's try micro i like micro for its insane mouse support but Oh, and it is in our terminal is broken. We don't have our cursor. Oh, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Let's uh, kill this uh, terminal. Okay, so micro didn't leave. Why? Why isn't Python and uh, has? A bit, uh, I couldn't understand the front page of GitHub README, so I kind of skipped it, but maybe we should still try it. Yep. Okay, this is something new. Checking for inner conflicts. Is this a conflict? Remove Mac dependencies after install. Is this a conflict or not? Uh, I have uh, I had one time with Gen2 very uh, bad experience trying to manage Perl installations, and uh, I got myself to the hell where where I couldn't uh, resolve the dependency cycle any longer. And it all got stuck, so I had to <laughs> distro hop again. So I'm a bit afraid of uh, conflicts. Uh, Neovim Helix HX. It is another editor. I think it's in Rust. I like its modular structure, at least the directories in the GitHub. Yeah, but modular structure and directories at GitHub don't really give you capabilities to open big files. But uh, com uh, the AMP and Helix editors, they open the stuff quite fast uh, when NeoVim uh, was kind of, it was very moderately bumping up uh, memory usage. Okay, so Helix uh, managed to, to receive a SIGINT channel, uh, SIGINT signal and quit. That's this, uh, that is very nice. Uh, at least, I think it's a plus overall. If we, if we can't uh, read a big file, we can at least uh, finish our session. So XI, uh, I'm not sure what to install on XI because, or XI, how they tell it should be pronounced, but I, I will say XI because it is uh, natively, the main, main installation is Cocoa on Mac OS. And I will need to find a third-party front-end to use it on Linux. QEdit, it is also not uh, a very uh, complete. It is uh, from uh, one person on Discord uh, and the Zeek. Uh, I just have it here to have a look. So for in future, I could all maybe also uh, get some ideas from its implementation. And uh, I think that is all for now. Yeah, we made some progress. We displayed a file and the lines, used new courses, and we tried uh, some fun with this 46 gigabyte file. So, yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, see you later in uh, coding sessions for an epic quest to write a text editor which is going to be
hopefully superior, but probably not. We'll see. Bye.